Last time we talked about hyperspace, we talked about some basic vocabulary. Well, in this one, we're going to talk about how this actually works. Time to engage your reimagination. Reimagine with us by subscribing and clicking that bell button. So George Lucas commented on hyperspace travel. In the commentary to Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope DVD, George Lucas mentions that the parsecs are due to the Millennium Falcon's advanced navigational computer rather than its engines. So the navigation computer could calculate much faster routes than sh other ships could. Similar info can be found in the notes Lucas recorded together with Carol Teitelman in July and August of 1977 to start a knowledge database for the planned sequels. In George's notes, he wrote, It's a very simple ship, a very economical ship, although modifications he made to it are rather extensive. Mostly the navigation system to get through hyperspace in the shortest possible distance, followed by parsecs and parenthesis. So a ship traveling through hyperspace travels along a single vector or a straight line. The better the navigation computer, the more tight or the less the margin of error or the higher the tolerance is for choosing the most appropriate vector through hyperspace, meaning they can travel longer distance on a single vector than they could with a less accurate navic computer. So each of the ships had that had hyperdrives had a particular class of hyperdrive within them. And a new hope we're given the Millennium Falcons being 0.5 past light speed. And according to the Ultimate Star Wars reference book, the Imperial One Class Star Destroyer had a Class II hyperdrive. So to state it simplistically, this effectively means the Star Destroyer must take four jumps through hyperspace for every one jump the Millennium Falcon must take through hyperspace to travel the same distance in real space. West End Games, who was licensed to do Star Wars role-playing games, back in the late 80s, early 90s, defined it all pretty well. In the Star Wars role-playing game handbook, they state, Hyperdrives propel starships into an alternate dimension known as hyperspace, where it is possible to travel at many times the speed of light. Ships in hyperspace can cross incredible distances between stars in a few weeks, days, or even hours. When a ship jumps to light speed, the hyperdrive motivator engages the hyperdrive. The ship rapidly accelerates, to and beyond the speed of light while the ship crosses into hyperspace. When a hyperdrive is deactivated, the ship automatically returns to real space at the speed it had before the jump to light speed. Hyperspace is coterminous with real space. If you head north in hyperspace, you're also heading north in real space. There is a galactic north, east, west, and south. Objects in real space have a hyperspace shadow, a presence in the hyperspace at the same quote location. This means there is an inherent danger in traveling through hyperspace. Contact with an object's hyperspace shadow results in instant destruction of the ship. The object in real space remains undisturbed. Starships have mass shadow sensors to detect hyperspace shadows and shut down the hyperdrive to avoid collision. Although these systems are not entirely reliable, while deep space collisions are very rare, they also tend to be quite deadly. To the object in hyperspace, not the object in real space which, as stated before, is left undisturbed. So astrogators must plot safe paths around interstellar debris due to the incredible speeds achieved in hyperspace. The margin between safe passage and a collision is often only microseconds. Navicomputers. To handle the overwhelming complexities of calculating hyperspace trips, most ships are equipped with navigation computers, navicomputers, or navcomputers for short. A ship's astrogator uses the navicomputer to plot a safe trip along known hyperspace routes. Navicomputers hold a tremendous amount of data, storing the coordinates for hyperspace routes and the location of stars, planets, debris, gravity wells, asteroid fields, gas clouds, and other hazards. Ships without navicomputers often use astromech droids, such as R2 units, to store an astrogation coordinates. Hyperspace Routes Hyperspace routes are established paths through hyperspace linking major planets, in a similar way as roads link major settlements on planets. These routes are known to be safe, allowing ships to reach exceptional speeds. As a route becomes well known and its hazards are better understood, hyperspace journeys can be plotted with more precision, allowing, quote, faster speeds, fewer jumps. 
Eventually, travel times between specific plants may actually decrease quite a bit. Travel times can increase as well if obstacles drift into the hyperspace route. In general, the greater the physical distance between the planets, the longer the journey in hyperspace takes. However, even systems that are in close proximity to one another may require roundabout hyperspace routes because of debris and other hazards. Caution is always called for when traveling through hyperspace. The positions of over 90% of the objects in real space are unknown. The hyperspace shadow of anything larger than a boulder can destroy a ship, and there are countless such things drifting undiscovered in space. There is always a slim chance that something has drifted into a hyperspace route. Nor has every route necessarily been mapped out. Brave pilots may plot new routes in hyperspace, but this can be extremely dangerous. Scouts often use a series of very short micro jumps, scanning ahead prior to each jump, eventually reaching a system after dozens of such jumps. This is a time-consuming, painstaking process, but it is much safer than blind jumping into unexplored space. While it is not impossible due to the complexities of astrogation coordinates, it is virtually suicidal to try to change course while in hyperspace. It's much safer for a ship to drop back to real space to calculate a new hyperspace course. Hyperdrive Multipliers A hyperdrive is ranked by a class or hyperdrive multiplier. The lower the multiplier, the faster the drive. Most civilian ships have a class of hyperdrive higher than two. Many military vessels and starfighters have a class of one, which is twice as fast as a class two hyperdrive. The Millennium Falcon has a class 0.5 hyperdrive, making it one of the fastest ships in the galaxy. So again, the Imperial One class Star Destroyer has a class two hyperdrive rating, according to the Ultimate Star Wars reference book. Some minor spoilers ahead for the Thrawn novels. In the novel, Thrawn has determined that he must travel to two ships which have re-entered in real space in two possible locations. One that is 8 light years away and one that is 22 light years away from him, respectively. According to one of the senior officers, assuming they went to the nearest location first, it had taken the Chimera 3.7 minutes to get there. In other words, it took them 3 minutes and 42 seconds to travel 8 light years. Given this, it would take only 27.75 seconds, or 28 seconds approximately, to travel one light year. With a Class II hyperdrive, a ship can travel 0.036 light years per second, or 129.6 light years per hour. This means the Chimera traveling through hyperspace would be moving 1,136,073 times faster than the speed of light, and would take approximately 32 days to travel across the Star Wars galaxy, which is 100,000 light years across. Now, we know that the ships that Thrawn was searching for were traveling in known hyperspace lanes. We know that traveling through known hyperspace lanes allows a ship to travel at a greater rate than otherwise. If we assume, therefore, that a known hyperspace lane cuts the hyperdrive multiplier in half, that means the Chimera was moving as if it had a hyperdrive class of 1. This means that ships traveling in mapped hyperspace lanes, i.e. the named trade routes, could travel very fast indeed. So to make this simple, provided these ships were not in a major hyperspace lane, a trade route, the Millennium Falcon could travel 260 light years per hour. An X-Wing could travel 130 light years per hour, and the Chimera could travel 65 light years per hour. In a hyperspace lane, double it. Hyperdrive Backup Many ships have a backup hyperdrive. While very slow, some backup drives are times 10, 15, or even higher. They can be used to limp to the nearest spaceport if the main hyperdrive is disabled. However, as a caveat, I want to state that when a Force user is flying a ship, then the calculations for hyperspace can pretty much be thrown out the window. This basically can be attributed to precognitive abilities, the same thing that allows a Jedi to block a blaster bolt or other things like that. So writers creating in the Phantomverse, please use these kind of thoughts when you're figuring out how long it takes to travel to different locations around the galaxy. And uh, just be reasonable when you're utilizing a Force user to travel at a greater rate inside of hyperspace. Again, most of these thoughts come from West End Games and from the Reddit user Mall Installation. Don't forget, share, subscribe.
Like he said, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more. Click the end screen to see our stories.